Here's your new desk, kid. You're on traffic. The hot sheet is posted here next to the map. What's his problem? That's Biggs. He's an institution. So this is what all the fuss is about. Why couldn't they build a freeway that goes past my place? They haven't even approved the money yet, kid. The bond issue won't be till December. It'll be years before any of this will happen. Here's your new partner, Stefan Burkowski. Heard all about you, Phelps. You go easy on me and let me earn the odd citation, and maybe we'll get along fine. I'm here to learn, detective. <laughs> oh, he's an intense one, isn't he, Mel? He's intense. The newly minted detective here, Cole Phelps. Hi, Phelps. I'll be keeping an eye on you. I could spend a little time basking in reflected glory. Make a change from busting hookers and dope fiends. Who was that, Commander? Roy Earl, chief detective and advice. Do they all dress like movie stars? Well, Roy is a movie star. And the whole of the seedy side of L.A. is his audience. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Stick with me, kid. You'll find out. Now some housekeeping. Warm Central Division welcome for Detective Cole Phelps. Some of you guys may know Phelps. He's the cop who broke the jewelry store murder. Stand up and take a bow, Phelps. If it's all right with you, That's sir. That's an order, Phelps. Ooh. Shh, shh, quiet, everybody. <laughs> Phelps is one of only two serving LAPD officers who received the Silver Star during the war. Really gave it those lousy Japanese, eh, Phelps? Uh, I did my best, Captain. Why are you war heroes always so modest? I've partnered Phelps with everybody's favorite pole, Stefan Bukowski. <laughs> Hope you like work, kid. Bukowski sure as hell doesn't. Well, that's why we have partners, right? <laughs> okay, okay, can it, guys. Stick with Bukowski. He's a good cop. He knows traffic inside now. I'm going to start you out with one case. You do okay, I'll give you a couple more. You screw up. You'll be rousting vagrants and running license plates. Now get down to the P.E. Freight Depot, 6th and Alameda. A patrolman called in a suspicious vehicle. Signs of foul play. See what you can find out. Come on, Phelps. <laughs> they weren't even his prints and he still confessed. Coroner says it's going to be at least a They really week pushed you through out. quick, didn't they? Six years on patrol before I got this death. You were here in five minutes. What do you want me to say? I didn't ask for any favors. You know this place? Sure. Near the old gas works and signal depot in the warehouse district. I'll direct. You giving me the hi-hat? Thirty-two years old, married, sounds like an average guy. What was he doing out here? Here, Phelps, we're not done yet. You can drive. Keep searching. Let's go introduce ourselves. You talk to her, Phelps. I'm no good at this shoulder to cry. Just a minute. LAPD, Mrs. Black. May we come in? 
We have some bad news, and we'd rather discuss this in private. I'm Margaret Black. Uh, we can discuss this in the living room. Please come in. We're going to have a look around, then we'll talk. Kavanaugh's. So who brought this home? Maybe Adrian was a patron. Aren't I should have an address. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. From KGI. No, you don't. Someone. LAPD. We're looking for any known associates of Adrian Black. Adrian? He sure most nice with Frank Morgan. They camp out the table in the back and talk on the closing. Frank's back there now. Frank Morgan? Cole Phelps, LAPD. I understand you're a friend of Adrian Black. Yeah, I know. Are you aware that he's missing? No, I hadn't heard that. Tough break. We found Black's car abandoned in a freight depot, covered in blood. You know anything about that, Morgan? Hell no. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I like Adrian. He, he's a good boss. If Black is hurt, anything you give up might help us find it before it's too late. Look, if something happened to Adrian, then I'm, I, I'm sorry to hear about that, but I don't know nothing more about it. I can't help you. When did you last see Adrian? Hell, I don't know. Uh, I had plenty to drink last night. Things are a little sketchy. If he was on his way to meet you when he went missing, you're going to have to do a lot better than I don't recall. He had a couple and then left, I guess. Maybe he had to go meet someone. That's the best I can do. This doesn't add up, Morgan. Your excuses don't help. Let's see how you enjoy the LAPD taking an interest in your life. You want my opinion? We tell Morgan. I say he's lying, and whatever hole he's got Adrian stashed in, he's got to go back there sometime. My opinion? You sure left his drink in a hurry. You want my opinion? You sure left his drink in a hurry. Check the place out. Come on. Day one of the big time, and you're already tailing drunks home from bars. You have some fun yet? I told you it was nonstop glamour working traffic, didn't I? I'm just trying to learn. Oh, come on, Phelps. Save the creepy teacher's pet stuff for Leary. One word. I knew it! Phelps, go after him. I'll try and head him off in the car. Remember, the gun is the last resort. No point running, Adrian.
Mr. Black, get back here right now. It's over, Adrian. All right, gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to put him down one round. We got a steak ad down on second later tonight. There's the guy. I heard he's an honest cop. There's an honest Can you drive to this one? But I ain't got time for cars. Detectives, over here. A knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. Landed on his face and ended up here. Car must have struck him from behind. Addison has life insurance. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Dick is a white male named Lester Patterson. Walked out of the barn into the street. Car hit over there, and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, name is Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're gonna take a look around. You're behind the wheel. So, where do you wanna go?
Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here. I beg I... your pardon? You're going to have to run that one by us again, sister. So, how did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. So he turned blind? Yes. He was still yelling at me when the car hit him. We're leaving, Lorna. But this doesn't add up. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Mother's coming in tonight on the train. Can you drive to this one? the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. You know the way. You can drive. And where exactly are we going? Phelps, Bukowski, you have a new case. Two women, possible drink drive. How was that a case? The broad says she was doped and that somebody tried to kill her. Where did this take place? That's the bitch you're gonna love. Right across the street. What? A Chevy style line took a nosedive off the escarpment, fetched up underneath a Cola King billboard. Up to it, boys. We got bad guys to catch. Guy was willing to write his own mother after I sweated him. See you later, fellas. Try not to work too hard. Look at you, Bantam. Stare to my eye, watching my caterpillar go. I'm just trying to fit in. Educated, hardworking, brave now.
Phelps. Uh, if you're looking for the coroner, he's down by the crash site. Hey, out of the way, bub. You want see this Phelps there laid out on the trunk and that isn't even the best part they've been torn off where did you find them they were stuffed in the young lady's handbag I'll run a trace for semen when I get back to the lab she's a long way from home I'm not a law Drunk driver? Maybe not. How so? Well, a head I found without a body piqued my interest. See what you think. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. <clears throat> Is it real? No. I think it's supposed to be a replica of an Indian shrunken head. It's some kind of curio or movie prop. See the casting marks? What's it made from? Plaster of Paris would be my first guess, then painted. So we can rule out the murder angle? No, you can rule that in. That thing was wedging the accelerator to the floor. Whoever did it wanted these women dead. How does someone manage to tip their ride straight off a cliff? If the driver's in a fit state, we should ask. Mrs. McAfee, we would like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. I prefer to use my maiden name, June Ballard. You might be familiar with some of my work. Can you tell us what happened here? You're kind of cute for a cop. Maybe a bit on the serious side. What about me, June? I'm a big fan of beasts. Of I don't like. Keep out of this. We understand that you're still suffering from the effects of the accident, Mrs. McAfee. The officer says that you claim that you were drugged. Who did this to you? That rat slipped us a Mickey Finn. It's no wonder I feel so dopey. I can't remember. Who drugged you, Mrs. McAfee? <laughs> you really are a cute detective. But a little too naive for my taste. What can you tell us about the passenger in your car? Jessica Hamilton. Poor Jessica. It's been a rough day for her. She's desperate to break into movies. What more can I say? How old is Jessica, Mrs. Ballard? I couldn't say how old Jessica is. Old enough sweetheart, as the saying goes. We found a shrunken head. It was used to tamper with your car. You see, I normally don't drive off cliffs. The last thing I remember is getting behind the wheel. You don't remember where the head came from? I don't know anything about a head. Why is everybody talking about a goddamn head? Isn't anyone interested in how I am? Mrs. McAfee, I think it would be in everyone's best interest if you accompanied Patrolman Gonzalez back to the receiving hospital. I'm being taken in. You could say that. On what grounds? On the grounds that you are under the influence of narcotics and that you are withholding information from the police. My husband is going to want a word with you, Sonny Jim. I think we're good here. Let's go see what we can shake out of the kid. UTI features the best live programming and transcribed show. Hello, Detective Phelps, here to interview a Jessica Hamilton. Jessica Hamilton. Oh, yes. She's in the room, right behind you, detective. 
You can't hold me here. Feeling no, better since this morning, I don't Jessica. Need to be manhandled by a, a doctor. I need my lawyer. Hey, where is the telephone? Hello, Jessica. Uh, my name is Cole Phelps. I'm a policeman. I'd like to talk to you about your accident, if that's okay. Um, okay. Can you tell me what you remember about the crash? It's all kind of fuzzy. I remember waking up here. Nothing happened yesterday. You could have died in a crash, Jessica. Why would someone want to kill you? Someone wants to kill me? I wouldn't know anything about that. I just went along with Junie. She knows all about the movie business. We need to get in touch with your parents, Jessica, to tell them what has happened. Oh, you don't need to worry them. They sent me along to stay with Aunt June. They trust her to take care of me. Is it a factor? Legally, you're still a minor, Jessica. We have to inform your parents. Please, please don't do that. My daddy will kill me. I know what happened to you, Jessica. Where exactly did it take place? Please, it's scary. It's really difficult to think of anything. Did the mother leave already? Someone tried to kill you, Jessica. Do you get it? Forget about being in movies. It's time to act like a grown-up. I had to wear a robe and lay down on a stone. There were lights, a camera. It's not my fault. I'm not a bad girl. Why are you trying to hurt me? You should think about going home, Jessica. You're getting mixed up with people who will treat you like last week's trash. Are you crazy? I can't go home. I want to be a star. Get in there and see what she's up to. Get in there and see what she's up to. You know the way. You can drive. Uh, where are we going? So what's the story? I'm guessing... Detective Phelps, we received a call about a domestic disturbance in apartment 803. Oh, the detectives. 
Listen, Mrs. Bishop's pretty upset. Uh, take the elevator and then left down the corridor. It's the last door on the right. Sounds like we're about to make it a hat trick of hysterical female witnesses. Looks like a mermaid in the background. Silver screen. Who are these men in the picture? My husband, Mark. And Marlon Hopgood. They work together on occasion. That's Hopgood's shop. Those men, I think they work for Guy McAfee. Do you know the name? No. Why should I? June Ballard is married to Guy McAfee. Have you heard of her? That slut. She's been badgering my husband for days. Mrs. McAfee alleges that your husband tried to kill her and her friend last night. I think you should tell us what you know. My husband's a movie producer. This has something to do with his new picture. He doesn't include me in his business. Your husband was using June Ballard in his new movie? Hardly. Mark feels that June Ballard has limited range and is over the hill. Where can we find your husband, ma'am? He told me he would be on set. That's all I know. Either we find him, or McAfee's people do, Mrs. Bishop. If you care for him, you should make sure that we find him first. I do care for him. But I don't really know where he'd go if he were in trouble. Hopgood might know. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need a location on a silver screen prop store. Just a moment. Silver screen props, corner third and Figueroa. Thanks. movie star, a wannabe starlet, and a movie producer's wife, and finally rubbing shoulders with the almost rich and famous. And from the stories they've given us, clearly none of them can act. You're behind the wheel. Phelps and Bukowski, LAPD. We are investigating the attempted murder of June Ballard and Jessica Hamilton. Oh, Christ! Uh, I'm Marlon Hopgood. How can I help? You hold castings here? How'd you hear about that? I got a little soundstage out back. Lead the way. Turn off the lights, Hopgood. Why would I want to do that? Humor him. One way mirrors. There's a room on the other side. Huh. Well, well. 
Find a way into that peep den, Phelps. I'll stay here and keep our pervert company. Jungle Drums, 8th and Francisco. Attention, Mark Bishop. notes. Fine. Where are we headed? Ha! Let's see him chase us now. On to the movie set, Phelps. Let's roll. Cover the exit. 11K calling KGPL, requesting assistance at 8 in Francisco, the abandoned movie set. My partner is pursuing suspect on foot. Code 3, KGPL. Get him, Phelps. I'll cover the exit. 11K calling KGPL, requesting assistance at 8 in Francisco, the abandoned movie set. My partner is pursuing suspect on foot. Code 3, KGPL. K calling KGPL, requesting assistance at 8 in Francisco, the abandoned movie set. My partner is pursuing suspect on foot. Code 3, KGPL. They're trying to kill me!
Mark Bishop. It was my only...